Hey YouTubers, today we have a Whirlpool microwave that won't heat up. It does everything else, but it's not heating up the food. You put in some food or a nice beverage to heat it up, and it does the full countdown. Everything seems to work, but the food and the beverage is still cold. It's due to this cheap little thing called the door switch. And as the door gets open and closed over and over many times, eventually it can wear out and then it just won't close the circuit to allow power to go to the microwave magnetron that heats it up. So to fix it, we just need a stepping stool, we need a Phillips head screwdriver, we need a flathead screwdriver, and we need a little Torx 10 bit that we can hook up to our screwdriver to take out the little screw that holds the door switch in place. So not too many tools are needed. Uh, the step stool is good because it can get you up high enough where you can see how to remove a couple of the screws. So we're going to stand on the step stool, we're going to get up above the microwave, and we're going to open up the cabinet. On one of these sides you'll probably find a power plug for your microwave, so you just want to unplug it. If not, you may need to just go to the garage or wherever the fuse box is, the breaker box, and turn off the breaker dedicated to your microwave. And you want to make sure you do have the power off by checking to see if the microwave will start. So we've got that out, and on some microwaves, you need to remove a couple of screws here from the top to remove this vent assembly. On the one we're working on today, you actually don't. You just remove one little screw above the control panel. But this is pretty typical. A lot of them have a couple of screws you remove here. These are just Phillips head screws. And then you open the door and you can pull off this plastic vent. And that exposes a little screw that is holding on the control panel. So these are the ones you would pull out on many different models, even some of the Whirlpool models. This Whirlpool model we're working on today is pretty recent and it only requires one screw to remove the control panel. But this would be on some of the older models. So you open the door, you pull off <clears throat> this vent. Usually this vent would be made of plastic. On this model it's made of metal. And it's just pulled out so that it can expose a screw that can let you remove the control panel. The screw on the control panel is located at the top. It's usually covered by this plastic vent. <clears throat> so on this one, again, there's nothing in the way. It's really nice. You can just go in, see the Phillips head screw there, and you can use your Phillips head screwdriver just to spin that out. And then once you spin it out, you just need to lift up on the control panel to get it out. So we're just removing that one little screw. You want to use a magnetic screwdriver so that once the screw is out, you can lift it out because you don't have good access with your fingers. You can even take a regular Phillips head screwdriver and expose it to a magnet for a while and it'll, it'll magnetize it. So you can see how it picks it up with magnetism. I'm gonna lift up now on this big plastic control panel and then we're gonna pull the front of it towards you gently, slowly, and that'll allow you to see behind it. And behind it, there's some wires that we just have to remove. Be good to take a picture just to help you when you put the wires back. It's kind of self-explanatory, but it'll make you feel a little more confident. Use your camera to take a few pictures of where those wires go. And then we can pinch in on, most of them have a little plastic release that you can pinch in with your fingers and wiggle them off. Some of them you just want to wiggle them off and they'll, they'll come out. And just take your time. And taking this off will allow us to easily get to the door switch. So I'm going to wiggle in this one off. And then I've got that off and out of the way and now I'm looking in and I can see the door switches. I've got two here at the top and two at the bottom and on our model the one here at the top on the right hand side the one we can see in the camera is the one that controls the heat. So everything was working the lights were working the fan was working the countdown was working but there was no heat so that little switch needs to be replaced. 
So we pulled out this little Torx 10 screw. We push in with our flathead screwdriver right here to make the housing let go. We're gonna pull the housing out toward us so we can get better look at it. And this black thing is the switch that we're gonna be replacing. I'm gonna put a screwdriver underneath it. I'm gonna pry up gently. And I'm gonna push back on these little plastic clips on the right and left hand side. And then I'll lift it up. It comes off of two pins. There we go. And then there's a link here in the description below to get a new one of these. I gotta get these spade connectors off. And when you have this switch, you may try just pressing in. If you hear a click, it's actually a good sound. Usually that means the switch is still working, but not always. But if there's no click, you know for sure it's not working. So we've got the new switch in place. We're just adding the spade connectors back on. We're gonna line it, line it up with these little pins and then push in until it clicks into place. It's in there really good. So we got the new switch in, and now we're going to line it up again, get that hole lined up, add the 10 Torx 10 screw, and I'm just gonna close the door so you guys can kind of see how the door switch works. So we got this one at the top. You can see the armature was pressing on that green pin, and now it's not, and now it is. And then down here at the bottom, you can see there's actually two other door switches that control other aspects. Okay, we're gonna put the control panel back on. We're gonna fit the little bottom legs into position. We're gonna add all the wires back in and we're gonna make sure they're in there nice and snug. They're going in as far as they can go. Let's take your time here. Maybe the picture you took will help you as a reference. Just push them all the way in and go to the next one. Just make sure that they're all back in place. Put these back in. So the black wire goes to your right and the brown wire goes to your left. Okay, so we're gonna push this back into position. Now that we have all the wires on, we're gonna lift it up a little bit by about a half an inch and then we're gonna push it in and then we're gonna push down and that's gonna lock in four little tabs. They have to go in first and then once they're in, then you push down until the top is nice and flat with the frame. That's good. And you can use your magnetized Phillips head screwdriver to just very take your time, very carefully guide it in here. It's like playing the game operation. Line it up and then go ahead and put that screw back in. And you're essentially done once you plug it back in or turn the breaker back on, you can give it a test, put a beverage in there or something and see if it's gonna heat up for you. There are other things that can cause a microwave oven to not heat, but the most common is that little door switch and they're so inexpensive. So we plugged it back in. We're gonna set the time now. All you have to do on this model is just type in the, the correct time and press start and that'll display the correct time for you. So it's 11.01, press start. And that programs in the time. And then we heated up some tea to see if it would heat. Close the door, do a 30 second heating cycle, quick cycle. And everything's working, countdown's working, light's working, the turntable's turning, everything looks good. And then four, three, two, one, we open it up and we got a nice hot cup of tea, which is great. So back working, only took a few minutes. Hopefully this will help you get your microwave working. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.